Ah, textures. They say that texture is the texture of life, or something like that. All right, so textures. Uh, I guess the first thing to do is go get some, which I guess is my advice for every situation. But uh, in this case, to get textures, you can usually download them from stock photo sites or uh, go just go out with a camera and take some pictures, which is what I did. And now I have a bunch of textures to use, and uh, I would enjoy sharing them with you guys, so I'm going to put up uh, pretty much all of them somewhere on the internets, and uh, then you'll be able to enjoy them too. So uh, let's um, let's import one here. It is the wall of my balcony, and uh, you can see it has some nice, some nice deep pittings, you know, some shallow ones. There's some streaks in here. I mean, there's just a lot going on, and I think that's fantastic. So what do you do with it once you've brought it out? You know, what what kind of thing can you actually make with texture? Well, the first thing I want to show you is how to blend the layers together. If you're going to be using real photos and you're going to be applying things to them or applying them to other things, the big element to understand is blending modes. So if you look here in this area where it says mode, uh, this is basically saying how will this layer react with layers under it. So let's pull out a text layer and I'm just gonna write here the name of uh, my Twitter, you know, and we've given it a nice, you know, deep red color. Uh, let's put the blackness at, say, an even 50. Right now, its blending mode is set to normal. If we want to make it look like maybe this has been painted on, you know, we can set it to something like overlay, which, you know, the shadows start to show through and that kind of thing, and Really, that's that's one of the big things to know when working with textures, is that the blending modes of layers are going to change the way that it interacts with each other. So just cycle through a whole bunch of them, and then you'll, you'll kind of get the idea of uh, what's going on. And it's, it's really, this is probably perhaps the most vital thing. So blending modes, important when dealing with textures or when dealing with trying to get layers to blend with each other. So this is a pretty easy way here to get this layer to appear as if it's painted on this layer. But there's another subtle thing you can do to make it look a little bit more real. Uh, obviously when you paint things on, it's not gonna have perfect lines, you know, it's not gonna be perfectly applied. So let's take this layer here, duplicate it, and let's put it above the text layer. And we're gonna now deal with the track mat. So Let's use a luma mat of this layer above, kabam. And what does that do exactly? Well, you can see here that all of the black space on the layer that you're using as the track mat is now cutting holes in the layer below it, which is pretty great. Now, you're gonna wanna use a curves, apply that to any layer that you're using. Uh, basically any texture layer, you're probably gonna wanna use a curves adjustment on it in order to do things like increase the contrast, you know, something like this, maybe, you know, so we can get a bit better crisper cuts out of this thing. And, uh, you know, you might wanna move it around a little bit to try to get uh, maybe a different perspective or just something like a little bit interesting. Whenever you're working with real textures, uh, you'll find that there's a lot of fine tuning that you're going to want to do to make sure that everything sort of fits together the way you want. But it's that organic inconsistency that's going to make things look interesting, you know. So now it's like, oh, yeah, some parts of the application process didn't work when you were painting this thing on. And so it's just, just an interesting way to add a little bit more detail to uh, what you're working on. And uh, now even if you set this to like a, a multiply perhaps, then you've got you've got all these little flecks and stuff carved out of it. And really, if that's not working, then you can just get a font that has holes already cut out of it. But, you know, there's an easy way to use a texture to cut holes in something and then blend it into something else. So uh, if you want to animate this on and make it look like it's been spray painted on using like a right on effect or something like that, then uh, you'll be able to look at make it look like it's being painted onto the onto the surface there so it's pretty good or if you want to make it seem like someone's spray painting it on you know this is about the the end result that you want to aim for so thing one done moving on we've got a texture out here and that's really great but we want a title that has a texture applied to it you know just like in the intro thing that i showed you and uh, i always want to keep my promises that i will you know be able to show you 
more or less how to make the intros. Pull out another texture and uh, let's put it uh, below the text layer. Use its track mat to say alpha mat of the text. Bam. Let's give it a curves. Boom. Increase. Uh, now you make it a little darker. Now what are we doing here? Yeah, darken it up like so. And it uh, looks like we're getting some strange little color artifacts in here. So pull out the tint and uh, shut those down. Boom. You're done. And uh, scale it down a little bit like so. All right. Getting better. Getting better. And. Uh, all right, here we go. So now we've got uh, two things that are a little bit visually interesting, and this one is its space is defined by the track mat that's referencing the layer above it. So now you can see if I animate this moving around, it's going to be revealing different parts of the texture. Now I don't really want that. I want it to be locked together in case I animate this thing. So you want to use this parent here and parent one to the other. So if I scale, or uh, or zoom or move or do whatever then this layer will be locked to the other layer and everything's going to move around as one unit so that's another important thing about textures is parenting them to things they interact with will prevent uh, abnormalities when moving them around uh, next thing to do with this i suppose is to try to try to class it up a little bit um, so let's take these let's pre-compose them okay so now we're going to use layer styles to try to make this look a little bit better. If you want to learn about layer styles more in depth, uh, check out another one of my tutorials that really deals, you know, in depth with that kind of a thing. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of burn through it uh, pretty quickly, just because uh, just because you might already have learned that. Okay, so what do we have going on here? Well, we've got, you know, a couple layers with a bunch of effects on them, and really what we're using to define some of the style in there is a couple of textures that are a little bit different than each other, and uh, we're just trying to put them together in an appealing way. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can incorporate real-world textures into some of your pieces and your titles. Uh, I mean, it's certainly not the prettiest looking thing out there, but at the same time, when you're using textures to grunge things up, that's not really what you're going to get now, is it? I mean, this is in harsh contrast to the how to make gradient backgrounds and all that other interesting stuff I was talking about. And, uh, you know, overall, just have fun and uh, experiment. So uh, here's me, uh, here's me doing just that. Uh, hopefully that was fun. Um, as you can see, the textures are just a basis for making things look interesting. Uh, in this case, this kind of has a, a grungy, perhaps uh, shiny look to it that uh, you know you can just use to pull out you know all those little flecks of detail that are in these textures. And there's just so much there to really just explore and have fun with. So. You know, uh, hopefully you can make something similar to this or to my original example and uh, just have fun with it. So uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Uh, thanks for watching. This is the thing you can do with textures, and uh, I'm not sure if I really explained it very well, but uh, I guess we'll find out in the questions. So if you have any, let me know, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks.